Secret Friends Unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 481. This is your guide to the geek side, and I'm one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, back from travel. I've got a graduate, and I am ready to sleep. Todd Oxtra. All three of those things sound, sound are like vaguely like movie titles. The Graduate, um, While You Were Sleeping, and um, what's the tra- a travel one? The Travel and Wilburys. Things, trains, know. and automobiles. Oh, there you go. There's Todd's free movies. I was showing yes. off my patriotic Spidey available at your local Target store. They didn't pay me to say this. I just thought it was really great. Yes. Uh, but good evening. Yes, we are recording on uh, 4th of July Eve. So definitely, rem- I don't know if you're pushing this out right away after we finish, but if you happen to be listening to this in the short term, be sure to leave out your milk and cookies for Captain America. There you go. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm Yankee Doodle Dandy. Uh, you know, appreciate our Constitution while it still exists as it is today. And uh, yeah, Charlie didn't introduce himself. It's Charlie Carden. Um, boy, after 10 years, um, I hope you know who I am. But if you don't, I'm Charlie Carden, if you hadn't already mentioned that. So, yeah, yes. uh, we're here. Uh, it's muggy. Uh, fireworks tomorrow. Uh, I've seen several memes that saying, you know, somebody who you know lives in Downriver in the Detroit area is celebrating their last weekend with 10 fingers. Uh, <laughs> I know it's the word. Be nice, Charlie. Be nice. We got I rain know. here uh, tomorrow, so we will be doing oh. no door antics. But that's okay because yeah. ultimately it's all about being free. And we're free yeah. to – recommend uh, a great service that we offer to some very cool people we absolutely wow that was the best set that was the be- that was the best and most patriotic segue i could possibly imagine well anyway what todd is alluding to is a little service called patreon where uh for about the last year and a half we have had an account over at patreon.com slash secret friends unite where we have great ad free versions of our four shows and uh, lots of extra fun content, including a great comic show that Todd and I do called Spinner Rack, and a fun program that I have called The Facts of Geek Life, where myself and a guest take a classic series and a season and break down a handful of episodes and just overall have a great time. All of that fun stuff can be yours, uh, sampled free of charge for a seven-day period by signing up for any one of our ad tiers, as we did with a new member this week. I'm going to jump right to the end of uh, this. We're going to give some love uh, to someone who I'm not sure that I know because it could be a pseudonym, but Mary Letters is uh, trying out our service. So Mary, thank you. We're excited to have you on board. We hope that you enjoy what you hear. And as the classic line goes, please stick around. Uh, We're glad to have you on board. But lest we not forget these wonderful folks who have been supporting us this whole live long while on the Friends with Benefits level, Mr. John Sidorf, The awesome Phoenix Sisters cosplay, that's Kelly and Crayley. Kelly is a frequent contributor uh, to our show, and we're actually going to get a chance to hang out with her uh, next month in Chicago. So look forward to that with her because we're all going to Fan Expo show. Brendan Myers, uh, Corey and HD, and Matthew Keel. Our top tier folks are called BFFs. That is the awesome Nias family. They're in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, friends of Todd's. Sean, Stella, and Henry, we are very grateful for all of you. And again, if you're listening to the sound of my voice, please be like Mary and go to patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Get your free seven-day trial and uh, think about sticking around because we would love to have you. All right. So if Mary, if this is your first episode you've listened to SFU proper, uh, we do a segment called We Got This Covered, where uh, basically we take the episode number, tie it with a comic book issue number that's the same. And this week I picked Young Romance from 1972, April. Uh, We've got a DC comic that is all about... Um, I guess the the trails and travails of uh, people dating and finding love in the comic book space. Now, let me look at this. 52 big pages. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you're seeing this. Oh, I'll give a shout out to our YouTube channel. My cousin, Matthew Perro, Bay City, Michigan, uh, after I unfortunately 
saw him at a funeral. Our our, our mutual cousin passed away. Um, uh, started watching us on YouTube, and I know he watched a couple of episodes back. So, Matt, glad to have you on board. Um, but anyway, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, the reason I brought it up is that you'll see this this beautiful yellow cover. And th- this has a, a tradition of kind of books gone by where a, a book was so thick that it had a bound spine, kind of like a regular book. But this was 52 big pages. Don't, don't take, don't take, le- don't take. What is that? Don't take less. Only take 25 less. cents. Only 25 yes. cents. Uh, yeah, where it has a spine that that reflects that this is uh, what the God, what, what does that even say? Bi- oh, uh, do you mean <laughs> Charlie? Would you like I'm, the man with good eyes to read it? <laughs> I'm squinting. Yeah, you're wearing those. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will read it. Yeah. So essentially, we've got about five different stories, but I'll read you some of the things here we've got inside. But, but, but first of all, you can win money in a contest called New. Get your man. Nice. Which is fantastic because, you know, Give you need to, to win some money because spending money on men, that always helps. Uh, there's one of the first stories is called Marriage Without Love, The Shadow Between Us. No, that's bad. But, you oh, know, in, it, yeah, it was the 50s. Inside story, Info, yeah. Charlie, How to Handle a Blind Date. So advice. Oh, my goodness. Ned and Gloria and Jim and Sandra. I was caught in the middle. Well, okay. Paige let, Peterson, let me, who's in da- Don'ts of Dating. Let's, let, me, let me go back to Ned and Gloria and Jim and Sandra. How can you be caught in the middle of four people? And who who is me? Who is I? So are there five people? This I, I, I'm, I, I, I think I need to read this. But anyway, back to you. Well, you know, I mean... Might have been a very progressive comic back in 1972, The Era of Love. It was yes, 70s, uh, polyamory, yeah. Yeah, Paige Peterson, though, is back with Do's and Don'ts of Dating. And a classic love story, Wake Up and Dream. But you know what, folks? That's not it. There's actually eight big stories and features in here. Oh, boy. And you know what? If you were confused what's happening, at least you can look at the cover and say, see, um, I guess it would be Glory saying, oh, Ned, Ned, it's my fault. I lost you. But why couldn't you forgive me? Um, I'm guessing uh, her sleeping with a family member of his. That that, that just this off the top of my head. It's like or a four way so, gone wrong. Several. That How was the five way. Happen? That was the five way. Oh, I get it because it is. It's referring to the yeah the five way exactly. Or so, the human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took got- it. Kind of, kind of took it to a place you need to go. But anyway, um, someone who I know this might shock you, but the woman pictured on the cover of this book. And it would be surprising because she would have been in her 70s. This is Madam Webb. I, I think it benefited for the fact that this was a drawing, not a photograph. Um, but yeah, this is her right here. Our senior news correspondent, now a shocking 124 years young, uh, has been in the business for a very long time. But now she works for us and only for us. Uh, she thought she was going to have a breakout earlier this year with her debut film, uh, but it didn't work. So she came crawling back and we took her, uh, we offered her half salary and she's still with us. But anyway, she's got our scoops, our news and reviews down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Let's get over there and find out. What's cracking? Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Charlie, you know, we talked about that comic book. We actually have found out that Madam Webb was an associate editor. She was going by a different name. She was going by Pauline um, Cobb. Uh, Cobb Webb. Uh, Webb's, and that's what Webb's she was salad. going by. But she was basically, basically recreating many classic tales of her of her romance through life so yes right. uh she basically had younger people playing her in dramatization through the four colors of comics so I'm madam glad. webb i'm glad that people can look back in all of your romantic escapades including that fantastical five way <laughs> but, <laughs> but ah, no! it's, it's like a comic book series fantastical five way oh um, my god there's the, the name first of the episode story right there. Yes, thank you, Madam Webb, for bringing us this great story. It's called, uh, basically, we've got a trailer for Batman Caped Crusader. It's coming to Amazon Prime. Originally, it's supposed to go to Max. And then at the time, uh, basically, HBO was looking to um, get some money back by moving some of their properties elsewhere. Uh, But it's coming, and this is essentially by uh, kind of a, a great set of people that are behind this uh, new animated series, Bruce Tim, J.J. Abrams, Matt Reeves, Ed Brubaker, and Sam Register. So a just a, people that kill it in regards to 
more um, expressive stories with the animation. I think this might be JJ's first and Matt Reeves' first time doing animation, maybe even Red Brubaker. But this is going to be more of a darker, uh, even a more noir take on Batman. And it's right. very early Definitely in his darker. career. We're getting like the, the classic Batman design from like the earliest days of the comic. No, I, 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 no purple gloves. That's that, see that I don't get the purple gloves. No, I mean, me neither. Yeah, it's, I know they you know, do that in the in the toys yeah. and things, but I don't see that in the comic. Well, I mean, it's if you look at the cover of Detective Comics twenty seven, I believe he's he's sporting them. But bright colors in a crime fighter. It's why I have never liked, and I realize he's right here, the classic red and blue Spider Man. I've I've always preferred the black Spider Man because I'm like, all right, well he he fights crime at night, so why would he? not just have completely dark clothing, you know, black leather. Come on. I don't know. Michael B My Michael, you know, obviously Michael Keaton is Batman influenced all that for us, but yeah, the purple gloves. I don't get yeah, it. I never really understood it, and I guess I just never really noticed it too much. But yeah, Batman's comics changed all the time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We're, we got to love the look, the you know the shorter ears, and just more of a very simplified look. Even right. though the yellow belt, I mean, I've got a Batman right yellow there. mixing in. Yeah, it's is. it's an interesting look. So, um, and basically, they're saying this should be Batman Week Two versus like Year One. Uh, mm -hmm. So early in the career, we're going to get a lot of first meetings with a lot of yeah. his Rogues Gallery, and they're going deep in the Rogues Gallery too, which I love. This isn't just going to be like no fun. This is going to include quite a few people. I mean, we're getting Diedrich Bader, who played a Batman who's playing Harvey Dent, Christina Ritchie is going to be Selena Kyle, Jamie Chung is going to be Harley Quinn, Mini Driver, Eric Morgan. I mean, just a lot of great uh, I, characters. I, I miss it, and I don't have it up in front of me. Who is Batman himself? Hamish Linklater, he was in Midnight Mass, so a different type of actor who's playing this role, and I yeah. think that's perfectly fine. I mean, we are not going to get, uh, you know, our favorite voice actor back Kev from... Kevin from, Conroy from yeah. Back from the Dead. Yeah. Get, you know, RIP. No. Yeah, I mean, no. I even when I heard the trailer, I'm like, did they snag this before he passed? Because I, I thought it was a, a good pass. But again, it's a trailer and, you know, you're just getting bits and pieces. So, yeah, a very iconic art style. It looks like the old school version kind of reminds me of those old um, Superman cartoons. The um, oh, the uh, 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 Spiegel, not Spiegel. I can't remember who. Um, uh, God, it's, on, it's on the tip of my tongue. But yeah, it was your. It was basically your first. They were even in black and white, weren't they? Or, or very faint. Color. No, they were in. They were in color, but they were yeah. very iconic. Yeah. Oh boy. From the forties. Um, right. Wait, Max Fleischer. That's Thank who it was. Max Fleischer. Much. Yeah. Right. So uh, doing some very iconic looks with it, not just aping the old style yeah. of Batman the animated yeah. series. Even some of the com costumes are very old, like the Catwoman costume. It's yeah. a throwback from from when she first came on. So right. this yeah. is very cool. I'm yeah. very excited for this show. Well, I'm fired up. This at August 1st, so that's just a few weeks away. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so this can be fantastic. So that is on Prime, and the beauty of Prime is that uh, you have it anyway. So it's going to yeah, be fun. Yeah, yeah, good yeah, stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. But uh, speaking of a, this is a DC series that the people at Max decided to hold on to, and it's funny because I watched these right before I came down here, and I'm going through, watching them on the TV, and April sitting there, she's like, what's Kite Man? And I said, yeah, you know, the Harley Quinn show that with Kaylee Kukaraco or whatever the hell her name is from Big Bang Theory. Uh, I said, this is not your style. She says, no, I don't enjoy that. But Kaylee said, Coachella? Right. Yeah, <laughs> Coachella. Yeah, I thought it was just La Cucaracha. I don't know. I apologize. And you know what? I'm sure she listens to our show. But if yes. she does, uh, send money and we love you and you're beautiful. But anyway, Kite Man is a character from the Harley and uh, well, it's just called Har Harley Quinn, I believe. Or, or did it become Harley and Poison Ivy? But I mean, they're obviously. No, it's just Harley Quinn. Yeah. They're the main characters of the show. And you could tell, obviously, by watching this. Uh, trailer that all of the characters from that show, including Harley, uh, are reflective in it. But yeah, he's running through, um, you know, kind of a day in the life of him just being a phenomenal screw up. And then you, you know, got to meet, get to meet his dad in the trailer and his dad thinks he sucks. And he uh, owns a very Cheers look uh, looking kind of bar called, is it Noonan's? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Noonan's. Which and then I and think he, what that stands for. He's with his fiance, uh, the Golden Glider, who later ends up fighting crime in the nude for some reason. I mean, there's a lot going on in this trailer. It looks yes. like a blast. I know, and Todd, tell me if if you're caught up and I'm not. I did not see the most recent season of Harley Quinn. I, really I am very that. far behind, yeah. but I love the show. It's great. Super fun. Um, one of the things I like about the show is um, 
uh, as they're running the bar, they're doing things. Uh, <laughs> Kite Man serving <laughs> Apocalypse or um, uh, uh, um, uh, Dark Side. No, yeah, Dark Side. Yeah, Dark Side. And he's offering him a drink and he's like, oh, uh, he doesn't drink alcohol, but he's drinking something lemonade and tea. And he's like, oh, it's it's that drink for my favorite golfer. And he says, Lee Trevino. Oh, and he says, Lee Trevino. <laughs> yes, Lee Trevino. Lee Trevino is for everyone. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it's Keith David, who is yeah. amazing. National treasure. Lee, uh, Lee Trevino, if you don't follow uh, golf, which unfortunately I was forced to as a child, but for the rest of us, is the father of one of the most important video games of all time, Lee Trevino's putting challenge as seen on The Simpsons. <laughs> well, he inspired it. it. Wasn't Lee Trevino? It was uh, what was his name? The it was a fake golfer's name. I don't think oh, I, could I thought, use I, thought I thought it was Lee Trevino. I don't know. You know what? That's, no, that's where the. I don't think that's not one of the seasons we've covered yet on um, on the Facts Geek Life because we've been doing The Simpsons. Um, uh, Carvello, or that's Tom Carvello. Yeah, Lee Carvello is putting. Oh, putting, there yeah. you go. Well, yeah. he, he had to come well, with a fake name. I, but was yeah. a, I was at least correct, and they inspired it. So this will be on uh, this month in July. I think, and I think it said the 18th through 23rd. I don't have it in front of it. So, but I have to check. I have to catch up because you know how will I know what's going on and, and well, stay fruit of all of the continuity. <laughs> in all seriousness, there's probably zero continuity, and you can just. It's watch a wacky sitcom. Time. That's yeah. all you need. To know. Watch, yes. watch and have a good time. So speaking of wacky things, and it's funny because we watched it and April's like, oh my God, this actually looks like fun. We have a new Christmas movie coming out uh, starring, uh, and I love it how you put it in, put it in here. We have uh, Chris Evans, uh, we have The Rock, and then we have Gross Point, Michigan native J. Jonah Jameson. I mean, uh, J.K. Simmons. Um, but yeah, this looks like fun. Todd, what's this movie about? So we have this movie called Red One, and uh, I wasn't sure what to expect, but basically this is like high tech Santa Claus. Um, J.K. Simmons is 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 starts off. He's doing reps. He's he's ripped and lean and right. his head of security is played by the rock wearing like <laughs> leather, of course. Right. And um, all of a sudden Santa is Abducted. kidnapped. Yes. By some force. And so they have to find a thief who can find Santa Claus. So who could they find? Captain America. Captain America. Oh, you exactly. Um, exactly. This trailer, and of course the trailer is filled with antics and stuff, but this to me breaks what I hear in Hollywood is one of those rules that The Rock always puts it in, in, in any contract negotiation that if he's in a fight, he has to win. Have, have you heard this before, this writer before? Like, uh, like It probably makes sense, yeah. But in this, it's funny because, they, you know, they're one of the parts of this trailer that they go through that they're transitioning is that much like, I think I think it was in the Santa Claus, maybe the second one, you meet some of the other fairy tale characters, the Tooth Fairy and this different stuff. So you're meeting different Christmas characters. So you meet Krampus, which we've talked about Krampus, I think, on this Love show. Love Krampus. Uh, and where he has one of those one of those Rochambeau slap contests, and uh, so the, uh, you, the 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 outro of this trailer is the Rock standing face to face with Krampus, and the Rock slugs Krampus, and Krampus goes my turn, and he slaps the Rock and knocks him down flat, and I'm like, wow, that's not what I would expect. Oh. Oh, Charlie, he will probably redouble his efforts and then knock the crap out of Krampus. Knock Krampus. I think, knock, knock, knock I think into, into knock the, the crap Christmas. out of Krampus, yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, we're getting like uh, really uh, swole snowmen. We are getting a uh, polar bear also wearing like leather to it's talks. Side um, it's, it's blue, not purple. I guess this is yes, a like different color. Yes, but so yeah. I mean, in this, it looks very fun, very goofy. I I honestly thought this was a Netflix Netflix movie, Me but too. it is actually coming to theaters. It's done by Amazon MGM. All right. So uh, if you see, it's going to be in theaters first, but you can always wait till it's going to be on Amazon, probably in time for Christmas. The next unless week, they yeah, hold exactly. out. Yeah, then oh, that looks like fun. I'm I'm totally fired up about that. It's goofy. It's fun. November fifteenth. All right, moving on to things that don't have trailers. So Marvel shows. Uh, we're getting the fact that Marvel is you know they're they're trying to stay alive with a lot of their you know more recent television projects that haven't exactly lit the world on fire. Um, I haven't heard much about this. The uh, Eyes of Wakanda, the animated show. Do I feel like we haven't talked much about this? 
I don't remember seeing much about this, but it's essentially going to be looking back at the history of Wakanda, its history, and kind of how it all all things came to be and ton of telling yeah. stories. So I'm thinking this is going to be a lot like um, – what if? What's a good? What, uh, maybe like, a what if, but it's going to be like real, like like twenty five minute long episodes about this. Yeah. Real kind of different kings, yeah. different Black Panthers, okay. is my guess. Yeah. So other than that, they don't give a date. It's coming. We have not seen a trailer yet. So maybe right. at uh, San Diego Comic Con because I think they're back this year. Yeah, yeah, that was the big news. They're back in Hall H this year. Uh, which means they, they've got to bring something with them. So uh, what if season three coming back says a completion of a trilogy? I mean, that's a show I would, I would love it if it went on forever. Cause to me, it seems like it's timeless, but nothing could really go on forever. Um, and then yes, the friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man, the big high school ensemble piece. We've been hearing about that for several years. Those are both obviously animated. Um, and then the daredevil show, uh, which went back for massive retooling. It, got, it was, uh, I think everything that they had done was scrapped. And it wasn't that news maybe about six months ago. Yeah, Five they had to get uh, several new showrunners. They decided yeah. that it's going to be taking place uh, in continuity with Daredevil. But we've obviously seen this Daredevil and Kingpin. Um, Separately, you know, post MCU, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, and Echo, and then we also had uh, She Hulk. So, right, right. curious what the tone will. be. B, and if they'll continue on with more of their, I would say, like amped up abilities. Yeah. Uh, considering, you know, Kingpin could survive a gunshot and also getting you know, hit by a car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then Daredevil really using his abilities in a different way, looking a little more dynamic. So I, yeah. I hope they don't play it too dour and sour because I think the Netflix series did a good job of like bringing all of the angst into a show already. So. Right. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know what else is left to do with Daredevil unless there's other unexplored areas. I mean, we have not gotten Bullseye, correct? Not on TV, have we? no. Yeah, the last okay. Bullseye we had was, uh, of course, Colin Farrell in the 03 movie and le- less to be said. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't think I really like their take on Electra, really. It felt a little bit unsatisfying. Um, so I don't know if they'd go back there. I mean, obviously well, I mean, they come back from dead many times. Yeah. Well, she, she's in the Deadpool Wolverine that's been confirmed, but that's just a cameo. Oh, it was. Okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't okay. realize that's interesting. I, I, I okay. believe so. Jennifer I, I, Garner. Yeah. Okay. But not the Electra in the, uh, the Netflix series. No, no, no. Jennifer Garner. Okay. That's what I was yeah. trying to figure. I'm like, Oh yeah. Uh, no, I was, Where's my I was, car? Yeah. yeah I was, yeah. Talking about the Fox films, and yeah, I didn't say. Okay, so. yeah, um, um, and apparently, so, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say this, this, and I already closed the window. I apologize. Does this is touch on what we're seeing next? Because I feel like Agna, Agatha, the Agatha Harkness show, whatever the hell they want to call it these days, should be the next thing we see. Because yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I've seen some pictures of it, and they're really going down there. So basically, saying that's going to be more of a ho- in the horror lens of Marvel, which is cool because yeah, we got, um, and that's going to be they said it's going to be around the Halloween time. So I think that's probably going to be a uh, you know late September October show. And yeah. um, I don't know, man. I, I, I you know now that we've are kind of getting like a lack of Marvel. We kind of have you know X Men ninety seven set up on a high note. We've got yeah. Wolverine, Deadpool. <laughs> If yep. we get back into those projects, which have already been produced after Disney said we're going to change some things, I'm just wondering if that's going to get people like are just still going to not care about right. a tough. lot of these projects. Yeah, it's I tough. don't know. It is. It's is tough. Well, the the proof will be on the screen, so we will we sure. will see, and we will be here to talk about it. All right, I'm very excited about this. I dropped this on their Discord, you know, like the second that it happened. Uh, and Todd, you and I are covering bo- uh, the first two of the four. G.I. Joe Energon verse uh, miniseries over on Spinner Rack within the next several months. You'll be able to tune in, listen to that. Even more of a reason to visit patreon.com slash secret friends unite for that free seven day trial. Plug, 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 plug. But yeah, G.I. Joe, there, so as expected, the four miniseries, so it's Duke, Cobra Commander, uh, currently running is Scarlet and Destro, which I've been reading and talking about. Though the characters all introduced, kind of sprinkled throughout G.I. Joe characters that we do know, which were all obviously introduced and created by Larry Hama in the 1980s, uh, are now rebooted. They're new, and they're all coming together in a big series uh, in November. A new G.I. Joe number one, and it's just a great piece of key art. And it's so weird because looking at this, you know, you're seeing a lot of familiar characters. 
but right in the middle of this piece of art, and I don't know if this is on the screen if you're looking at YouTube. You Dude with a suit. Google, yeah, Google, no, no, Google the image. You have a transposition of a blonde-haired woman in a suit that's oh. very obviously Cobra, and you yeah. have a woman with a, a with dark hair and glasses wearing the big star, very symptomatic of G.I. Joe of the United States. So we have kind of a flip-flop Scarlet and Baroness. I think that's kind of interesting, and I'm, I'm wondering if it'll have anything with it. Oh, there's always time to do a flim-flam, Charlie. Exactly. but And it looks like we are introducing a new character. Appears to be a short-haired African-American guy. Dude in a suit. Belt. Dude in a suit. Yeah, I believe. I, I get the feeling that's somebody we've not seen yet, unless I'm uh, misremembering. But yeah, we've got all, all your favorites. Cobra Commander, Destro, Scrap Iron, the Crimson Twins. Clutch, Cover Girl, Stalker, Stalker and uh, yeah, so I'm really, I'm fired up about this. Um, so yeah, I think it looks good. It feels like it's capturing a lot of the fun and goofiness and in, in just of the animated series and then bringing kind of probably some solid, you know, obviously solid writing. So I right. love that we're finally getting that versus it's like, oh, it's guys in black armor and it's bad right. like the movies. And Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, you exactly said it great. Featuring the first appearance of an all new character and many familiar faces is the comic that will change everything you know about G.I. Joe. And that's only half of it. So, the writer is, I was going to say, Joshua. I was going to say, Williamson. I was gonna say Kevin Williamson, who wrote Dawson's Creek. Different guy. Oh, <laughs> he wrote uh, a really good comic I read, Birthright. Oh. Very oh, really? cool comic. He wrote Nailbiter, which is a horror book. Um, really? So yeah, and he's done he's done work for DC. Um, in regards to he did uh, Flash, Justice League for Suicide, Suicide Squad, really? um, Deathstroke, uh, Batman Metal, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, oh, so um, talented guy. Yeah, really yeah. good stuff. Uh, art team of Tom Riley and Jordy Belair, who drew the Duke miniseries. So I'm not all the fired Prince. No, not the Prince. Do, 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 do. Oh, different prints. I was thinking of your, your Minnesota prints there. RIP. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, I would imagine this will find a way to coalesce with the uh, Transformers characters. That's not my favorite thing, but that doesn't mean that it could be Todd. Uh, it couldn't be great. Todd, are you continuing to read the, the Transformers ongoing? Yeah, they're, they've been amazing. And that's what okay. I would say. I, I okay. think the comics have really, especially with Star with Boy Rivals, it really bled into I like, did. hey, yeah. these robots have personalities. It's not the humans that are driving the stories. Right. I'm like, and they're, yes. they're, they're not wisecracking racist robots like, in the, like no the no and that's the thing oh, and i, I think that's the that's the fun part yes we don't need to right. make our robots the worst version of us oh my god well i'm very excited about this so again november 13th uh that i will pre-order that and they're terrible about making pre-orders available it's not like with marvel and dc you really gotta you gotta remember Sorry, and wait it out. yeah you'll, it's okay. you'll know when it's there well it's so, all you, it's, you won't forget it's already in my calendar, so there's no doubt about it. So, well, all right. Well, that takes us out of the news. Todd, time to get out that Fuber app, that feeble Uber app. We've got to get ourselves down to Skugtown, Nastyville. The Geek Easy awaits. We're getting in that that dirty, stinky cab with the AM radio. The guy turns it on, and all of a sudden, I'm hearing this advertisement. Hmm. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, 
high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting on the Geek Easy cover bands plan. Drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So, like I said, I've been traveling, did Logan's open house. So I did not get a lot of chance to like watch new things because I always had high intentions. Oh, I'm gonna be in the hotel room, I'll do these things. I didn't. Um so I did watch Inside Out 2 with the family. We had a blast. Great movie. It's amazing. Yes, yes. Uh, especially if, you have, if you've ever had kids, uh, if you've been a teenager or you have t- teens, definitely one, one would, really one would, ex- really well. one would expect that everyone has uh, didn't, didn't go from uh, tween age to adult age that they've been a teenager. So <laughs> Some people <laughs> didn't. Some people just have either not gone through it or skipped it completely and became yeah. like miserable adults. Yeah. So... Over. Oh, great. Like mid- middle management at, mo- at most corporate uh, jobs. Well, we've all met those people <laughs> yeah, yeah. that were adults at the age of like 12. It's like, okay, you need to grow up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, check out Inside Program. Out 2. Really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, I have been caught up with the boys this season. More exploding everything. Do you, do you feel yeah. like – here's a question. Do you feel like the exorbitant violence – is just how much higher can we take it? And it's not really feeding the story. That That's kind of where, because like the most recent one with the farm, and I got to tell you, the best part of that episode <laughs> was the old McDonald that played over the credits. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> they did add some levity because there's not been a lot of levity this season. Yeah. It's been like, but I mean, the, uh, the whole, who's dying next? What bad thing yeah. is going to happen? And well, I mean, the whole episode with, with Homelander in the lab where he grew up and he murders everybody and two of them he kills and the one guy he burns to death and the other guy he shoots through the dick. I mean, it's just, it's like, why are you doing this? It just, it it's, seems to be like how much. It's very drawn out. It. Yeah. And I yeah. think that good part is they've announced that season five is their last. So I think it's finally time to land right, this yeah. bird to see where we're going. Uh, but right. they have done a good job of uh, touching on Gen V with yep. some of the uh, little cameos and things we've seen. Yep, 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 yep. I am really curious to see where most of this goes because this season is going certain routes. We did have, um, you know, Billy. Billy is trying to figure out where he's going, what's going to happen. And we had, I think, a breakthrough with, you know, what's happened to him and then what happened to the bunny. So if you're watching the show, you'll you'll see what happened to a bunny. And we know that something happened to Butcher where he blacked out and he demolish things so right right yeah he he might not be as dead as we think he's going to be right um and that may not be cancer charlie is what i'm just gonna say yeah yeah exactly yeah Yeah, it's kind of so so. but yeah it's gotta i think we need some resolution soon because this season feels like yeah it's been drawn out like certain things probably longer than they need to be but i did laugh the one girl who um the uh, actress who plays firecracker yeah he's actually like um gay which is so yeah. funny that she's yeah, playing a and, character that's totally right. You know, to, to, yeah, total mega. Hat which she, which bumper, she's yeah. like, I, I just play the, the the role I'm playing. I can do anything. She's like, right. yep, I can make that it look thing. like I'm the I'm yeah. the Jesus Juice member of the team. Which oh my god, yeah, yeah it's 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 yeah. pretty crazy. And I do love uh, who is the the, uh, the 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 black actress who's the other t- who's the smartest person in the world. Oh, Sage. Yeah, Sage and her her flirtation with with the deep, you know, and how he oh my god, just <laughs> well, she has to make herself dumb to enjoy yeah. things, which I absolutely right. love. so basically has to dumb herself down, which then yeah, yeah. which it's a yeah. great dynamic because and then right. the deep is gone. He's, deeper? he's finally getting some some yeah, he's going deeper. Yeah, yes, exactly. Oh That's what god. we can say. Yeah, it's pretty but crazy. We're, we're some things the chess yeah. pieces are moving in the show, so we'll exactly. we'll see where this goes. Right, um, and the, the uh, boys, hot, yeah, the boys, of yeah. course, is on Prime. So I always like yeah. to, to shout that out. But yes, Hot D House O the Dragon. Holy cow! 
We got some drag. We don't. I, I feel like you know, it's we get maybe like two minutes of maybe two minutes of dragon screen time. We we got it in two different ways in this most recent. Yes, episode. yeah. Dragons showed up, but they didn't really do anything. They just kind of watched some things yep. and landed. Didn't, didn't eat anybody. <laughs> Nobody got set on fire. Maybe they're lonely. We don't know. Oh, we they did get people. that. We did get the the potential of some horny dragons, which I that's that's a scene. That, that, well, how that do you get those a, eggs, Charlie? You, you eggs I, don't come from nowhere. I, that can be a deleted scene for the for the yeah. home video release, please. Let's let's avoid the dragon humping. That's just no joke. Yes. For me. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know there are there's an audience for that somewhere, but not here. Um, so essentially, the first three episodes, I mean, are just getting building up that tension. To looks like we're gonna finally get some action which we really need because we have right. not gotten a lot the only action that actually happened happened off like screen where we have these two families that have been fighting for decades finally came to blows and we see their bodies but no real movement forward but we do have it where it looks like um essentially the the master of whispers now that we've got is essentially pulling all the threads finally on finally on staff with um uh Prince Aegon. Um, we'll see where this is going to go, but I think it's going to go horribly wrong. But I did like the fact that Rhaenyra did make an honest attempt to see if she could settle things right. amicably, and obviously that did not go well. Yes, they got together in the well, or the well of the souls, or the the castle of a million candles or whatever it was yeah <laughs> trying to lay it down um so yeah so we've got is it this they do 10 episodes so we're what is it was this uh, three? It's 10 or, or eight four? but we're at three we're at three it's always must see tv yeah, okay. always love uh yeah, you know the the ten. behind the season scenes so yeah and my t- hotel yeah. had an actual hbo so that's why i oh, watched it <laughs> I tell you, you know, and if you uh, if you travel more frequently, my my recommendation is always the uh, travel Roku. That's what got me through my my long travels. I mean, I had a laptop with me, so what's the worst yeah. thing I watch on a laptop? Very true. Yeah, laptop. Or and I actually podcasted the first time ever in a hotel room. It worked really well. Brought the laptop. Uh, brought this yeah. mic with me. Um, I, and I had I like used- decent internet for a, fi- a chance. Or for I have. I've done a few episodes of Holocron early on. Uh, just when, but I was I not sitting in the bed, Charlie. Yeah. I was at the table. I sat at the desk when I did it, being professional. That was long ago. <laughs> long. I didn't own a desk, and my I had a bad back. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever my excuse to be. All right. Uh, the acolyte. Star Wars. Now it's funny. Is uh, after you and I finish here. I'll be recording with Mark yes. uh, Holocron, and we'll be pushing that out. Mark uh, tends to dig a little deeper uh, because he's a little bit more of a devotee, and I try to balance that out. But Todd, you and you've been on, you've covered the first couple of episodes with us, but I know yeah. that you have some notions. We're talking about episodes five and six, or just running it up to this point. So by all means, where where you land in presently with, uh, with the Alkalite after episode six? I still don't get the tone of the show. It's all over the place. We have like, I mean, I will say the, um, the, you know, we're, we're finally getting into in spoilers if you're not up to speed, but we're finally getting some answers to our questions. You know, the, the big battle between, um, Smilo Ren and the Jedi was really a cool battle. Oh, it's fabulous. And yeah. And the, the deaths, you didn't really expect that. Two of our it, it, the thing that made me cancel my action figure order is that now all the characters are dead. Uh, so Jackie I just I don't even uh, what's his yeah, name? It was, uh, it was Jordan and Jackie Moon. Yeah, it's just like George. Yeah, George. like George. I'm gonna call him George. George. Like just the shorts, George. jean shorts. George. George Ash. Just call George. him George. 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 Yeah. George. Yeah, and then yes, Jackie and Moon, Jackie yeah, Moon uh, yeah, gone, and it did kind of surprise me. And somebody made a point about this, but it felt like <clears throat> he was so overpowering against all those Jedi. And then you get to the battle, and then he's destroying them. But then he takes on Soul and even Jackie, and it's like it, it just felt like weird. It was like okay, all of a sudden I am the most powerful person on the planet, but now I'm gonna just have regular battles. Um, right. So it did feel a little bit weird, but they said, well, yeah, these Jedis probably have never uh, faced Force users before. Right. Get that. And uh, we did find out it actually takes three impalements by a lightsaber to actually kill in the, in the In the mid to upper body, so kind of center mass, because it was, yeah, it was a triangle. He went boop, boop, boop. And uh, yeah, she yes. was toast. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. 
that was uh, but that was a big surprise. I know watching that, and again, that was in episode five. We got episode six last night. Yep. Uh, that it was a big shocker, uh, and it much needed. You know, uh, po- even Daphne Keene has gone on uh, some interviews recently and saying, "Hey, what I really appreciate about this show overall is that they're willing to take those chances." And because one of the biggest things were places where you can really get stuck is that there's uh, there are no stakes with the characters as far as who's going to make it, who's going to not. Um, and yeah, and I appreciated that, but, um, we end up with a parent trap. So the sisters switch places. Exactly. But that lasted like two seconds. Cause everybody figured it out. We got like the yeah, weird tracker yeah. dude figured it out. And apparently right. Jason figured it out really quick. Uh, Manny, right. um, yeah. yeah. Manny, and this was it, the it, slow burn episode. This yeah, was kind of exactly. like the but we're I, gonna tell I, you what happened, but wait till next episode. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because, yes, once Soul uncovers that May has swapped paces with Osha and he stuns her and put ties her down to a, a chair in or into a, a bio bed in their little sick bay, there he's like, Now we're gonna hash it out. End of episode. You know, it's episodic television. What are you going to do? We're getting like a, a, a ocean side seduction between uh, yes. Jason yeah. and Osha. <laughs> I just watched it again tonight, and he's like, well, if you're not going to join me in here, can I have my clothes back? Yeah. So we almost got Star Wars butt, Charlie. Like, yeah. There's like been very li- I mean, we got what? Yeah. The, the what was it? Um, the We got almost got a Star Wars um, nudity in Return of the Jedi, or maybe we did. I don't know. We did. You know what? No I, one I can ever know. I, with uh, that, and we're of course referring to the scene in Jabba's palace. If you do pause it at the exact right moment, when uh, Ula, who is the dan- who is she was a, a London ballet dancer in real don't life, don't tell anybody, then they'll figure out our secrets, and, and then she falls. Be, yeah. And you can, you know, as a, a, a pausing it on my VHS, you do see a boob move through the thing. And I'm just saying, it, it does exist. It's just very How yeah. Did but George let that one go. I don't know. Maybe fix it. He fix it. Edition. Special edition must have. <laughs> <laughs> Must have. Oh my God! All right. Well, well, Star Wars continues. It will. All right. We have three more episodes. Two more episodes of the Acolyte, uh, which is uh, happens on Tuesday. You'll hear about it a little bit more uh, in depth and, and unbelievable scrutiny with myself and uh, Mark and our guest, who I've not yet met. It's somebody new that Mark's bringing in. So you'll TBD. hear that. That's what I mean. Yes. You'll hear it uh, concurrently with probably hearing the show. But anyway, all right. On my side, I just finished. I read the last two of four issues today of the Sons of Star Trek, which was a miniseries. Uh, Star Trek is published by IDW, uh, and this was uh, Q's son, which we we met, who was played by John Delancey's real son in the uh, very late series episode of Voyager. Uh, comes. To Deep Space Nine, pretty much close to the end of the series, because all of our characters look about that age. But it's falling in lockstep with other things that have been happening in the two ongoing Star Trek comics, including the fact that Worf's son Alexander uh, led this bloody revolution, and now he's imprisoned. Nog is, as we saw him at the end of DS9, Jake is kind of drifting through life. Uh, and so you get these three sons. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. That Q Q Q Junior or, or Q J, as they call him throughout the series, um, snaps his fingers and he transports them uh, onto an alternate reality ship, and it's guest star Heaven. Uh, Gold Ducat is the captain of the ship, Starfleet. Uh, but you also have. Tuvix, who was the blend of new, uh, Tuvok and Neelix from Voyager, which is the source of many millions of memes. You get Mariner from Lower Decks. Uh, Jadzia Dax still alive. You just get a lot of different stuff. Oh, my and God. These four issues are... I've been reading my fan fiction. I guess. these. <laughs> so these four issues are really just an exploration of uh, these characters and where they're stuck in life and trying to to find out life lessons. So it's a great read. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, but again, all the issues are out now. I've fallen off the bandwagon of reading Star Trek every month. I was really on top of it. And I'm like, I got all these piling up. And so I've kind of limited myself to the miniseries, but I've not kept up with any until I got to this one because I thought it sounded really interesting when it was solicited, you know, probably six or eight months ago. And I jumped on it. So, yeah, I'd recommend it. And as we've talked about with uh, with digital comics, of course, you can find these at your local comic shop. I'm sure eventually, uh, apart from single issues, there'll be a trade of it that you can pick up. Definitely support your local comic shop. But if you're a digital reader like I am, um, generally when these comics come out, uh, after one or two more issues goes by, the price of those previous issues will be cut in half. So it's yeah, it, it, Comixology it, it, has discounts, yeah, especially if you're yeah. a Comixology uh, unlimited uh, subscriber. Yep. Through through Kindle, by the way, because Comixology yep. is, is not an app anymore. So, um, so wow. yeah, so I would recommend that one. I thought it was fun. Um, 
And then secondly, guys, excuse me. Uh, secondly, Star Trek Prodigy is back. I've only watched the first two episodes, which is what we're going to talk about on Code 47 when we recorded this month. But all the episodes are there. So I've got to get back and, and start watching them, obviously. Uh, but one thing that returned kind of under the radar for me was that 90s show, which is the spinoff of oh, the really? 70s show. Yeah. Yeah, back for a second season. Uh, the Did they get only- Danny Masterson out of jail? <laughs> Not that so would much. Be, that would be quite a feat. But uh, <laughs> the thing that was lacking here is that there was no recap. So this takes place oh, uh, a year yeah. later. So it's like it's a summer thing because the young lady, the daughter of Donna, oh, and they stay the with them during the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they come yeah. back and, and visit in the summer. So the first uh, couple of episodes actually had uh, Laura Prepon as Donna as a recurring character, but also had the return of her dad, Bob Pinciotti, who was a great character. Um, but He's still uh, alive. Yeah, Don Stark, apparently so, and he looks this the is, The wife is dead. Donna is, or uh, uh, not Donna, uh, what's her name, is dead. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, Donna's mom. And then she Eric. Like Queen of the Eric, Forest. Eric, uh, Eric's sister is dead, too. Ro- Le- actress Lisa Robin oh, Kelly. Oh, that's right. Had, she yeah, had some had issues, a, yeah. Yeah, I had a, had a drug problem. But we've yeah. not yet seen Eric this season. But anyway, it's a very it's a very typical sitcom. But, Todd, the, the thing that I think is notable in ep- is in episode three, we get the return of a character that's played by... Todd Oxford with hair, Seth Green returns. And uh, yeah, because he had a role. Are in they the wearing like hyper color and cross color no, jeans. They were, they were working at, in this episode with Seth Green, they were working at Hot Topic, but they were at war with the guys from Abercrombie and Fitch. It was, it was pretty funny. Okay. Uh, what year was this? Because I feel like that's 90. Like Abercrombie and Fitch and Hot Topic were like ni- 95, 90s. 90, yeah, this is 90. I think it's 95. Five, 95 or 96. Yeah. I was going to say Chess King, maybe Chess King, and uh, what was the other one? (laughs) I know Abercrombie was a thing. Spencer's was around at that time. But yeah, Hot Topic, that might have been just the genesis of it. But uh, Leia, who is the daughter in the central character, gets, because she's staying in Point Place for the summer, staying with the grandparents, she gets a job and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it it was, uh, that that one's fun. And I assume it's 10 episodes. It's not exactly must watch. I don't know when we'll get back to it. But yeah, it's a good time. Are you doing, are you, I heard the clickety clack. Are you doing some research? I am looking it up. Abercrombie and Fit. Apparently the company was I looked it 1892, up. but I looked it up. Yeah, I was like, are they? I because I figured, oh, are they even still around? Because they've been so mired in controversy with the oh, they only you know have guys with six packs and stuff, which is what which is spoofed in the episode. But Seth Green gives a great. Oh performance. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Seth Green gives a great performance, so it's 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 fun. Did you end up watch? Did you watch the uh, the the night show when it came on last year? No, nope. it out. Had, I, you know, I couldn't even summon any interest in that show <laughs> i understand it's i mean it's a it's a dumb set it's like the later seasons of that 70s show it's yeah just, it's a, it's i mean it's like it's like happy days to me and i mean it's like oh, okay oh good yeah. we're in the, we're in the ted c mcgintley phase so of exactly <laughs> oh my By god season two they've jumped yeah. the shark. oh my god all right well that takes us out of the geek easy todd time to get out that uh blah, 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 blah. air quantus app we got to get down to the land down under Tina hologram, Tina and the mutants await for us to continue the summer of X part four of 2009's X-Men origins Wolverine. So let's go. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome. Thank you, Tina. We're sitting in the Thunderdome where the mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And we are on part four of the summer of X. X-Men Unite. But this time we're disunited because we're going back, way back, to where it all began, the origins, with X-Men Origins Wolverine. This came out in 2009, April 9th, 2009. Essentially, once again, three-year break from the last X-Men film. This time, though, directed by Gavin Hood, who, honestly... This might have been where he peaked. Uh, screenplay by David Benioff, if you know that name, from oh. one of the showrunners of the Game of Thrones. The, the GOT bros. Yeah, him and his partner wrote this one together, I think, yeah. Uh, well, Skip Woods is the other person, so I'm not oh, sure who good. Skip Woods okay. is, but not uh, the Skip other him. guy. Skip him. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, a budget of $150 million made 373 so always good to double your budget right. with your box office. Yeah, uh, they, the they, 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 they squeak down through exactly so yeah yep 
the byline is the early years of James Logan, featuring his rivalry with his brother Victor Creed, his service in the Special Forces team Weapon X, and his experimentation to the metal-lined Mutant Wolverine. Looking back, this movie scored a 38% on the tomato meter by critics, and the audience liked it a little bit better at 58%. You can watch this film if you have not already watched it or want to watch um, Refresh Your Memory on Disney+. Plus and other ways to get it, basically video, library, um, falling off a truck, someone's garbage. Right, um, exactly. Look for it now. Big pile yeah. of them in a dumpster, absolutely. Yep. Um, um, I will say uh, first, let's look at the cast. Let's look yes, at the please. cast, Charlie. I would yes, say so, first, first and foremost, yep. I will pick apart the fact that the summary called him James Logan, of which case his actual name is, is James Howlett, and Logan is a nickname he picks up along the way. So boo on you, bad summary. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. Based on the – there was Picking a Wolverine it. origin comic back in the day, which was – this was partially built right. on. Um, right. Yeah, so um, – because we know anything – we need to know every bit about our heroes because right. the more we like, tell us, the more interesting they'll be. Like just like Boba Fett and Darth Vader, you need to know everything. He hates sand. Exactly. So we did get a couple of retrofits in this. So we got Leave Schreiber as Victor Creed, aka Sabretooth. Now, you know, we know what we know based on the movies. We're actually in the latest right. trailer for Deadpool. Did you see it, Charlie? Where yes, they yeah, introduced he's back. the classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the classic Sabretooth from the first movie is what's, back. What's, great. What's the Taylor Maine. What's, Tyler Maine. Taylor Maine. Tyler Maine, yeah. And he has yeah. uh, big, bushy uh, eyebrows and black eyes and his, his mullet. He has a He's big beard. a little bit, a little grayer yeah. along the mane, yeah. I, I, oh, I know that that actor himself has put on a lot of weight, so he has a big, bushy beard. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, we've got uh, Dan, uh, Ryan Reynolds showing up as Deadpool. Really one of his first big roles. I think this is post-Blade uh, Three. But before the Green Lantern, which is in 2011. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Danny Houston playing an early version of William Stryker, Man. which we saw in, uh, you know, the second X-Men film. Danny Stryker. Danny Houston's amazing. I wish he was in more things. Yeah. That dude he, is a scary I, I was going to say, he was in everything. And he I, he is, uh, a lot of these people are, like, serious. Like, does, does Fox, you know, keep these people in the basement somewhere? Because they seem to be in every Fox film. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Will I am playing yeah. Wraith, who's one of the team. Wraith, uh, yeah, kind of a cool character. He can teleport. That's kind of cool. Lynn Collins is a Kayla Silverfox, uh, who can basically touch and make people do things. Kevin Duran, a favorite of mine, playing Ooh, Red Duke's yes. Blob, the immovable right. object. Uh, Dominic, Dominic Monahan playing Chris Bradley. I really don't remember the character he was playing, no. like a, a mutant. Uh, Taylor Kitsch from uh, Friday Night Lights playing Remy LeBeau. Yep. Uh, Daniel Honey playing Agent Zero. Um, didn't, I mean, super abilities, I think, was probably like good aim and. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had to look him up. He was, It was some kind of energy projection or some, or like kinetic energy, something. But in this, he was just, he and Deadpool seem to have the same abilities. Except yeah, very at fast. The end, yeah, except shoot, for, well. yeah, except, yeah. yeah, except for at the end of it when Agent Zero meets his Waterloo, and excuse me, yeah. spoilers, obviously. Um, and, and Wolverine does his beautiful, cool guys walk away from explosions. Uh, the, the, the exploding chopper obviously kills him. But yeah, he can, he yep. can do flips through the air, a lot of lazy wire work in this movie by the way people flipping yeah and yeah exactly so that was that one so and then yeah, yeah and then um, you get you get into the druthers of some of the people you, that you'll you'll never hear about so yeah yeah um and then we do get um you know some other characters we get the heather and travis hudson who yes. were also flight james yep. hudson which was supposed to be a, they found wolverine when he came out of weapon x so um you know that's one thing we also have like you know we have a flashback when logan was young so we do have some actors playing them uh troy savon wow troy savon played uh little jimmy back in the day michael james olsen played young victor john howlett who uh was uh the guy who was wolverine's father well no, 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 he was the, he was the, the, clearly the, he was married to Wolverine's mother, but his real father was uh, Australian, and this was pointed out in the podcast. Listening. Aaron Jeffrey? Was, uh, yeah, Australian actor Aaron Jeffrey. Oh, got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, got it. He was so the, the last name of was, Logan, yeah, exactly. even though Victor he, Creed didn't have the name Logan, but he probably right. should have been Victor Logan. 
Right, but then obviously that's the name that uh, Jimmy or James Howlett decided mm-hmm. to take on because that was his yeah. real birth name. A little bit of and, a, uh, and, a mini, and then Tim Pocock as Scott Summers. Right, and uh, I did yeah, ask, Scott Summers. Yeah, one note I'll make about Alice uh, Parkinson, who was uh, the mother of of Wolverine, uh, was that she was first of all she obviously was was screwing the gardener uh, yes. or whatever. But then when Wolverine as a young man sees uh, Thomas Logan murder the man who he thinks is his father, Wolverine, uh, much like Gene Illustrated, said, well, you know, sometimes in puberty and in, part, and in times of heightened stress, that's when mutations exhibit. So that's when Wolverine gets his claws, which were basically a sharp, bony material. And he murders his birth father, who says, sorry, son, ugh, and dies just in a very typically corny fashion uh and then yes young jimmy runs out victor chases him he says we're brothers we got to be together always be together right in 1787 yeah canada it was i thought it was like the 18 for maybe the 1840s sure why not it could be any time they're oldies old times yeah after this you get a montage that is my favorite part of the movie because you you see the brothers fighting in the civil war then you leave. and it's a nice transition with the music. It's like I said, for yep. me, it was this part of the movie. Transition well done, forward, yeah. and they're in World War One. Then they're there on D Day, which is funny because April and I just watched Shaping Private Ryan last night, which of course starts yep. with D Day. This was obviously a little bit more truncated. I would have loved to have just seen Captain America walk by, though. You know what I mean? Um, but I guess you can't, <laughs> before I guess you, before we actually had it, like yeah, yeah there's you know, can we get that guy to be a Captain America type? Yeah, yeah, sure. And that was the man. What's and he then doing? Yeah, you finally see them in in Vietnam, which is where the story picks up because they that's nothing good happens in Vietnam. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So, yeah, that's when they finally get hooked up with Stryker because I it was a funny scene. They said uh, Stryker finds the two brothers uh, alone in a cell together and Stryker, who is a major or colonel or something, he's like, well, I understand your execution was scheduled for eleven hundred hours. How did that go? And Wolverine says it tickled because they can't be killed. And then that's when they get recruited for the Big Weapon X program and we're off and running. Uh, and it's funny, Fox is, like I said, just like I said, oh, Danny Houston must be owned by Fox. This was just a cavalcade of, like, dudes you saw in 24, which, again, April and I are watching. But it's like the African diamond merchant was a villain in the season of 24 we're watching right now. Uh, just tons of stuff. And this was all filmed in Australia, too. So they had to fly all those people down there. Yeah. Um, and then Danny Houston, I think his first big breakout role was, uh, was it The 30 Days of Night? That movie, oh, that makes amazing, sense. and he's of course yeah. married to Angelica Houston. Thus, that is that is. The oh, really? Age. Well, yeah. I know it's 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 not just a coincidence. She's a much. I, I assume she's much older than him, but maybe not. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. But anyway, um, this movie. I will before we get into the nitty gritty of it. I will preface in saying that this movie is kind of bittersweet for me. My son uh, Noah, my oldest son, he's uh, actually just just turned twenty four. Uh, adored this movie when he was nine when it came out and he and I unfortunately haven't spoken in a number of years, but we loved this movie together. So it's a little challenging for me. It's tough so, for me. To, it's tough for me to be objective, but um, I will tell you, sorry, uh, you're completely wrong. Angelica Houston is his half sibling. Oh, <laughs> there we house. go. It was the yes. name. The name threw me off. But yes, thanks. Well, yes. That. But she was, she was, a, the child of John Houston, the famous director. Yeah. So it'd be weird that she married another Houston. That I yes, I did not know any of those connections. Houston, Houston. But now it's but now it's all very clear. So all right, well let's get into the meat. Todd, how are we feeling about this movie? So this is the movie that I think was felt like the oh this is the X Men at its Z you know I guess it would be uh, Nader. Uh, yeah, right, not yeah. the zenith, the nader. We were on our uh, way yeah, down. Not yeah. the apex. Uh, yeah. We uh, so gonna, let's get our yeah. terms correctly. The horizons yeah. here, the nader is down here, and mm. yeah, the vertical, the parallels, yeah. all yes. that stuff. Yeah, um, and but, pitch and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. I think there are some good parts. Like you talked about, like the the. I, I think if we basically stopped or continued on with them in time doing things. I think this could have been a completely different film that would have been very interesting. Once we layered in, oh, we're going to make a team that is full of mutants and we're going to pull off a gig, but essentially it's not for everybody and Wolverine gets a conscience late in the game. Right. Um, And then it just turns into more of a, 
I don't know, like kind of like a cavalcade of like cameos and the right. plot's kind of weird. We get weird, uh, you know, right. motivation by William Stryker, what he wants yeah. to do yeah, and why big, he wants yeah. to do it. The big the fake team. out with the love story. And then you think she's dead, but the whole thing was a setup. But then at the end of it, Wolverine forgives her and helps her liberate her sister who happens to be at the three mile Island. I, it was funny. I was just watching a, um, uh, SNL retrospective that mentioned the date of the Three Mile Island. So, in case you were wondering, Three Mile Island took place in 1979, which would be the end of this film. Which means the Vietnam bit took place. So they the caused early, Three yeah. Mile Island. This this it movie caused Three Mile. Oh it my did. god, I didn't Retro- realize that retroactively. Which would yeah. mean the Vietnam parts took place in the early 1970s. Yep. The team stuff uh, ended around 1973 because we know there's a six year difference between yep. the end of the team stuff and then the the second and third act of the film. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh so I guess not to get too far ahead of it. So we have the uh, official ultimate you know striker forms this team. It's Will I am. It's it's Agent Zero. It's Deadpool. They go on a mission essentially to um what was their what was their actual um objective in the mission Charlie, they needed to me. find a meteor rock or some kind. That's uh, and, right. And they're, they're striker in, wanted yeah, they're in Africa. Yes. Uh, it, it was rumored within that scene when, in the village where they were going to just kill all the villagers when they didn't find what they wanted, uh, that that's that uh, one of the villagers was Aurora Monroe, was Storm. But that was just that ah, was okay. one, of those, one of those rumored or left on the cutting room floor or something like that. But yeah, yeah. That, that was yeah that was when Logan said, you know, I can't do this anymore. I'm walking away. And he just disappears. And we as well, it yeah. was really like saber tooth kind of – wanted to continue his bloodlust uh yeah. everybody else was perfectly fine killing everybody and yeah we walked away so then yeah. wolverine walks yeah. away and then we find him in as a lumberjack with a girlfriend in canada uh, six how, years later how yeah. many years six, six years later yeah. so yeah kind of established a life and it's you know as we know um when you're happy in a place where you're doing a job that you probably aren't destined to do Things are going to go wrong, right? Absolutely, and that's what happened. So, yeah, uh, Striker shows up in Zero, and he's like, uh, "Victor went nuts, and he's killing everybody now." And da 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 da. And you know, a day later, uh, Victor does show up and appears to murder Wolverine's girlfriend. And so now Wolverine's out of bloodlust, and Striker says, "I can do this yep. experiment and give you this uh, this magical metal, and we know you can survive the procedure." Where if I because apparently skeleton. Wolverine could never beat Victor without. Right, the abilities. Because yeah. there's a there's a big uh, fight scene. The Weekly Planet guys had a fun with uh, with that as well. You know, Logan gets tossed into the log, so he's logging. <laughs> Kenny Loggins. <laughs> oh my God, uh, Highway to the Danger Zone. But anyway, yeah. So that's how we, and then we kind of blend the Alka. They go to Alkali Lake and they blend it back into X two with uh, you know th- with like the room where it happened where obviously he fights Lady Deathstrike. The room where it happens. Too. Thank you. The room uh, where the stuff happens and we yes. get yeah, we get Naked Logan butt when he pops up. The reason all the girls went to the movie is that they could see a naked Hugh Jackman from the back. Uh and yeah, and it- <laughs> I love it. They they do the procedure, and you know, and he's underwater. I don't, I don't know why they need to put him underwater, but they put him underwater and inject him with all this stuff, and he dies. And they're like, "Come on, come back!" And then he comes back, and then for some reason, his I guess he does have super hearing, but yes. he hears Striker say, "Well, just erase his memory." Throw him in now. the toilet. Throw, Throw him yeah. in the toilet. Oh, he's a, yeah, he's a toilet. He's a toilet baby now. Oh, flush him down. That's why it's in water, Charlie. He's in the oh, toilet tank. Because they're gonna push flush him. Just gonna go. Yeah, exactly. The gonna go like this. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I forgot about the super hearing part. That that gets retrieve the adamantium, yeah. and we're gonna try it again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was the rock they got in Africa. It all comes yep. full circle. Right. Uh, Wolverine's now can use his claws. He's dangerous and right. more dangerous. Um, he doesn't call, yeah, and we, you know, be careful who you call Bub. Right. Because that's where we go next, right? Right, yeah. We're going to track everybody down. You, of course, forget, you know, the poor old Canadian couple that gets killed when Zero blows up the barn and stuff. The people who took him in. That would be the, that would be, yeah. uh, the yeah, that fight. would be, yeah. The, yeah. 
And so, yeah, then he ends the up, Hudson's, he, hooks, yeah, he yeah. hooks back up with Will I Am, but not the rest of the Black Eyed Peas, which I think was a huge missed opportunity myself. No, Fergie no, no, could no. have been a good uh, Emma Jean Frost. Grey. Oh, Jean or, Grey. Or, or, yeah. And then uh, what was the other one? Uh, Apple D app could have been oh, like. The Asian guy. The real like skinny. <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he could have been Sunfire. Apple and then, yeah, we were good to go Apple oh, D app. Yeah, oh that's great. God. Yeah. What was oh. the other guy? Voodoo or Karma or. <laughs> What was the other guy's you name? Make, you make them sound like a, they're American gladiators. I don't know. There was a third guy. You're going to have to Google it. Uh, American there, Gladi- there, there should yeah. be a Black Eyed Peas like comic book where they're superheroes because that would yeah. be amazing. No, 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 no. Don't funk with my heart. Anyway. All right. I'm so looking we, them up. I'm looking at move. the roster of the Black Eyed Peas very quick. We so, then move. Uh, we, Charlie, we then, just yeah. let you know. No, Charlie, we have to talk about this. Taboo. Oh, sorry. That's who Taboo. it is. Taboo. That's that game. Fergie. Yeah. That's that game, taboo, can't say the word. Um, so anyway, yeah, we end up in New Orleans where we meet uh, the, uh, we, we see Fred Dukes from earlier in the movie, uh, the awesome Kevin Durand, who's now put on like 300 pounds. He's the blob now, and he has to have a boxing match with Wolverine, and Wolverine's wearing boxing gloves, but he puts his claws through him and says, I'll cut your head off. And he says, you've got to go to the island. That's where Stryker keeps all the mutants. Well, the only guy who knows how to get there is this card playing guy named Remy LeBeau. Who escaped from the island, so he knows exactly. where it is. So yep. when they when they find Remy LeBeau, the, the, ens, the ensuing fight where Victor shows up means that Will I Am dies. Um, and because Victor, yeah. he, there's a good fight. I'm like, I mean, he's gonna kill him, and he's like, uh, you know, teleporting, which wasn't too bad. Well, I am was yeah. not bad in this film. No, you know, he had a cowboy good. hat, Charlie, that I made have, him legit, totally legit. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, then Victor obviously kills him by uh, by he's jumping on and grabs his spine and breaks his back. It, it was the violence in this movie, I noticed both in this, and I definitely see it in 24 a lot. Maybe it's a Fox thing. When someone gets stabbed and they pull the knife back out, there's never any blood on it. There's is, no blood okay. in this. There's no blood in this movie yeah, whatsoever. Even, even when Wolverine gets, you know, shot in the head at the end of the film, not to jump ahead. No um, blood. But, no. Yes. But anyway, yeah. So then uh, after a big punch up, very typically uh, in films like this, uh, Gambit says that he will take Wolverine to the island. Then they go to the island. They walk in. I and, will. Yeah. They walk in on I will give, doing an experiment. I will give, yeah. I will give Gambit a lot of credit because I thought the fights and what Gambit brought to the table is pretty cool. He uses his, his um, staff, staff kind of like a flying. He, he charged things really e- uh, easily. He used the card. So, you know, not a great uh, Cajun accent, but kind of cool take on much that better than Channing bad. Tatum. Thank God yeah. Channing Tatum has never been – because I don't want that, but he's probably in Wolverine and Deadpool, though. As, you think so? Yeah. As, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There haven't, there, yeah, because there hasn't been no, any no other me. live action uh, gambit since this time. This was pretty much it. No. Um, so, anyway, the end of Pithy Island, they walk in on Stryker. He's, he's performing the final experiment under someone under a cloth, so you don't know who it is. And that's when it gets revealed that the whole thing with his girlfriend's really alive and the whole thing was a scam they faked her death in order to enrage wolverine so he would undergo the procedure and wolverine with this deception he's just like you know what i can't handle it i'm screwing him out yeah he just he walks away and it's a ploy because striker wants to find uh, to create the ultimate soldier to kill all mutants because his son, as we see his son is like on ice. Right. And which we so, know is later yeah. on. Creates yeah, tan- basically, tan- yeah. Tangentially. You, you, obviously they're trying to make you feel this is kind of shoehorned in with the other films because you have the young, one scene we missed was you have the young Scott Summers, Cyclops that you thought, Oh, this guy could grow up to be James Marson, but we don't have gene yet, but you have all these other mutants. Um, so, and then you do get it a really horribly DH Patrick Stewart at the end of it. Um, well, and then, yeah, yeah so the, the mutants that were captured, the one of them was, we find out, um, you know, Silvermane finally comes through and, 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 Silver you know, Fox. she's not, not Silver, 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 Silver Fox. Spider, he's yes. a Spider-Man yes. villain with the Maggie. Know, the, old, the old millionaire yeah. guy. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, Silver Fox comes through, but we find out the reason why she went through all the hijinks because her sister yeah. who ends up being right. Emma Frost, Correct. which is so bizarre. <laughs> right. And then we've got other mutants and they're letting go. And they were basically utilizing all of their abilities yeah. to create the perfect mutant who happens to be 
Deadpool at Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool with his mouth all sewn together. And again, if you've never seen this movie but have seen the end of Deadpool 2 and the extra credit scenes, it's it's recapped in that. But yeah, he's he they p- turned him into one individual with the powers of all the other mutants that you've seen in this film. He's got uh, sword fingers, he's got he's got Cyclops blasts, he can teleport like Wraith. Um, what else can he do? Is it, is it the main ones that we see? Yeah, those are the bit. Well, he can. Uh, did he have some kind of ice power? Did somebody have ice powers? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, Was that like Emma Frost powers? Like he could like make. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, don't know. I, I don't think he did the did a well, lot listen, of we'll, stuff. We'll focus on those main three. Uh, yeah. But yeah, then uh, Victor is there the whole time. But Victor says because well, you know he what? didn't kill Victor. He he yeah. pulled, Wolverine pulled back. Did not kill Victor. Kind of right. like, hey, I'm gonna let it go. You actually didn't kill her. But you're right. still a bad dude. Right. But then the two of them put their, you know, they're also helping all of these poor cage mutants escape. He has this great money shot where he's running down with his claws out and he's slicing all the locks to the cages and they'll play open. <laughs> ching, 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 ching. And, uh, and so he's trying to lead Kayla with Emma Frost and all the in Cyclops and all the other mutant kids down this long hallway. And it's just, and then a door open is just like the duel of the fate. So it's like the end of episode one with Darth Maul. And because he's like, Take the kids out of here. And then, you know, then we see the, the Deadpool. And it turns into the big fight. Now we do find out with that we're, uh, we're at a nuclear power plant. We're on uh, the top of a nuclear reactor having yeah, a good exactly. time. We're at, yeah, so that's when when it looks like Logan is going to fall to his death. That's when Victor shows up and says, nobody kills you but me. Let's fight it out. So they slug it out together. And they eventually, it was funny because it's actually very similar to episode one the star wars film because yes. they decapitate him as opposed to cutting him in half and at the end of it my head just um, goes down yeah and it's down. blasting the cyclops beams right and exactly. i'm like holy crap it's, did it did ever stop when did he close yeah. his eyes well it did because i don't know did you finally do we know we have a conversation about the stinger but we can get back to that in a minute um but anyway cyclops or uh wolverine does finally get down and strikers walking at him he's going to kill him but couple of scenes previously, Stryker uh, has a gun with adamantium bullets, and it turns out if you shoot Wolverine in the brain with an adamantium bullet, he will lose his memory. So he does. And it'll, it, it bounces <laughs> off the, the, the adamantium skull, and it just turns into scramble eggs. Yeah. So it's just kind a of like Sage, Charlie. Oh, there you go. But it, yeah, but it no. grew back, but not exactly the same. That's what they were saying on Weekly Planet. Like, is the bullet still in there? Or because how would it, it, it never would it, spit out? Yeah. Would it just fall out his ear at some point if he just did this? Maybe. I don't know. So at any rate, uh, he loses his memory. Uh, Kayla gets killed in the ensuing melee, but not before she touches Stryker's leg and says, keep walking and walk away from here. Walk and until your feet bleed dry. Walk, yeah, exactly. So I, I guess we don't. Did Stryker have like fake feet? <laughs> X-Men I guess too? <laughs> it wore it wore it wore his shoes out. Um, but it's I, weird. It's weird because so obviously after this, uh Gambit shows up and says, you know, hey, I know you know, I don't know you, blah blah blah. He says, Well, you better get out of here. Um, but and so Gambit get, Gambit was not part of anything. He sat in the plane that flew them there. I don't know why he had a plane. But then they he takes off, and it's funny that big pull-out shot, uh, you know, where the camera just goes up, you do see Gambit's little plane take off. At the very, yes. that very last shot of that, and then Wolverine runs away, and that yeah, he is, goes off to. Yeah. It's the next uh, twenty years uh, or so. Is he just, and then we meet him. Goes to movie. back to back the to what the Klondike? No, the uh, Laughlin City. That's where we meet him. Remember, Laughlin that's right. City. Oh yeah, because yeah, that's right. Yeah, Alaska. Because yeah, because yeah, Rogue wanted to go there, and yeah, yeah exactly because it's, um, it's exotic. But yeah, that's it. But no, the, the post credits is we get the U.S. Army catches up with Stryker, which is real weird because 20 years later, he's not in prison for murdering the general who he he, he murdered the general. That's right. So it's giving him a hard time. Uh, maybe they weren't able to make it stick. Who knows? And then the real, uh, there were two different after after credit scenes. We got one in the U.S. and one was overseas. The overseas one, which I think was in Japan, was just Wolverine sitting in a bar smoking a cigar, not knowing who he is, which is not much of a scene. Because it's like what happens. And but it didn't thing, happen yet, right? Yeah. Because we got the Wolverine next. Right. And, no, yeah. we have, uh, um, is that the, well, anyway. Um, but the scene that we did get is the rubble of the destroyed uh, nuclear power tower. 
and you see a hand like kind of like cousin it come out of the and Todd, I know you didn't know about this because I don't think you watch it. I told you about it after the fact. Well, I, Disney Plus is bad because they don't have the shit in it. I'm sorry, but it's the, because it's I go there, to the end there. of the cre- I, I go through the credits and it's like there's nothing there. I'm like, what am I missing? I'm, I'm telling you, I watch it on Disney Plus. I will totally look there. again. I will look again. But do you see a hand reach over and grab a head and it's Deadpool and he's still alive and he goes his his the skin around his mouth came loose and he goes shh and that's the end of the movie. So you're wow. meant to think that Deadpool's still alive. There you go. And that's the movie. Yes. All right. Um, so final yeah. thoughts before we give it the uh, the big uh, uh, O out of 10 clause. You know, maybe I'm becoming a little bit more forgiving in my old age. But now that I've seen so many bad X-Men films, I'm like, this one isn't as bad as it I kinda, remember. It kind of pushes it somewhere to the middle, doesn't it? I mean, there's some dumb parts, of course. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. the Deadpool part was, yes, I'm like, that's horrible. Oh, my God. Because I probably mm-hmm. thought we'd never get Deadpool again. So I'm like, that's how we're going to end it. But obviously right. now where we have Deadpool going and where we're seeing right. this, I'm like, right. I appreciate, you know what? Yeah. The, the, what we can say with the Fox X-Men is they tried really hard um considering they were kind of making up as they went along because i don't yeah. think they had a long-term plan so right. i'll say this one was it had its good points and i think leave schreiber was a great addition because tyler may, may would probably have been the worst thing like, ever if you brought him in he just wasn't an actor with it where Leo no was a serious actor yeah. absolutely all yeah. right yeah i agree with you and again i have kind of the rosy colored glasses because you know my son and i love this movie so much but yeah looking at it you know looking at it with the benefit of the fact that this was fi- from 15 years ago and yeah. everything we had in between we had some great x-men movies in between and we had the worst x-men movies in between we had you know every two it's the rule of two with yeah. x-men right it's yeah, the rule of yeah. two too good, on, too bad. Off. Too good, yeah. too bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly correct. So anyway, uh, out of 10 adamantium claws uh, for a mixture of this and that, I will give this one a 7 for the enjoyability. I'm going to give it a 6.5. Fair. Si- six and a half claws. Very not fair. a lot of great one-liners. Not a lot of, you know, some good fights. But, like, you know what? Um, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. good William Stryker though. William Stryker probably has the best like actors portraying a character. Yeah. Um, although we got the one from um, the Bra- yeah, uh, uh, the Days of Future oh, Past who, yeah, who was quite honestly, who was he's that? Just, yeah, he's just some dude, yeah. and you see him in the next. It's probably so. Reacher for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it was Reacher. <laughs> Could have been Alan Richardson. You didn't know it before, exactly. he, got, before he got before he got buffed. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. All right. Well, next uh, we and actually later this week we record. Deadpool the first with uh, yeah. a longtime guest that we've been after a cosplayer friend of mine uh, from the East Coast Joe Colton so I look forward uh, to doing that but anyway in the meantime that is our show uh, Todd where do people find you out there they find me on threads at T Oxtra at secret friends unite uh, we're still on Twitter at T Oxtra at secret friends you um, you know if you're there we're, we're there too but yeah check out our stuff um, we want you to um, enjoy our YouTube channel we do a lot of good stuff there as well our audio and video is there um, we'll fix Charlie's podcast eventually working no on it clue why code 47 is having hijinks that's weird tweaks listen to the main feed they're all there they're all there for the most part I hope but anyway uh, you can find me also on twits and on Instagram at the C3 just spell it out uh, I spend a ton of time on our SFU discord but also on a discord uh, that my wife and I recently started we are lifelong Star Trek fans and we'd love to foster the Star Trek community here in Michigan so we started a discord called the United trekkers of michigan and anybody can join as i said a michigan focus but you know what if you just want to talk no no frills no bs but just want to talk about the latest star trek stuff we are there for you so find us uh find us there on discord we'd love to chat with you with that i'm going to tell you as always friends thank you for joining us sharing is caring and keep on trucking be the hero not the villain in a truck i said bub not blob Oh, I see what you did there. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server. 
or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube 